we all have a pretty good idea of how not to hold our sticks. The real question is, how do we know if we're actually holding our sticks the best way possible? Today we're gonna to examine some common, not so noticeable grip mistakes, and we'll wrap up with what I believe to be the most overlooked issue with grip. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamour Strummer. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Now, let's jump down to the kit. So I know that yes, it's easier to show you one right way to hold sticks than a dozen wrong ways, but there are certain pitfalls that a lot of drummers or drummels. There are a lot of pitfalls that a lot of drummers will run into and certain things that I think many of us have been guilty of at some point or another. The trick with some of these is that you might not actually notice them. And so that's where it does kind of make sense to cover some of these wrong ways because you might think that you've got everything right, but maybe you're not getting the results you want to get. So the first one is the classic pinky sticking out. This was one I was really guilty of when I first started playing. And I've noticed that even today, I'll have a tendency as I'm playing to start to stick out my right pinky, but it only happens when I'm playing thumbs up, more of like a French grip with my right hand. I think it's okay if, I know I'm kind of making excuses here for myself, but with your right hand, if you're playing more of a thumbs up, technically all your fingers are gonna be sticking out anyways, right? Depending on how you're doing it, depending on how closed or open it is. And so I don't think it matters if a pinky's starting to stick out because really all your fingers are sticking out very loosely. So I think that's why it feels natural to me to do that. Now, if I were playing this way, I'm playing more of a palms down and my pinky's sticking out. Well, that's weird. That's a problem. That's something to think about. If you're playing more French, what's well, okay if fingers are kind of sticking out. Um, but as soon as you're German all of, or, or American, somewhere in between, those fingers need to be wrapped around. And the reason why is because the pinky is a lot more powerful than you think it is. Really, this is a topic for another video, but you want to be able to use that pinky uh, as you're playing, especially if you're playing doubles, because that's really the key to strong doubles. There's a lot of muscles here in your forearm controlling your pinky. So wrap it in, make sure you're using it. And here's a big one, squeezing too tight at the fulcrum, squeezing right here between thumb and first finger rather than letting the stick rest here. And that's the kind of thing where really the big symptom, I guess, of that is that your sticks probably aren't gonna be rebounding naturally. And so that's something to watch out for if you realize you're having to move your hand too much or the sticks just aren't bouncing, things aren't smooth and natural the way they should be, it could very well be that you're just pinching a little too tight. Uh, but this third thing, and this is a, a big one that I think tends to disguise itself because we know that we wanna wrap our fingers around the sticks and you know look right as we're playing. We don't want any fingers sticking out. But sometimes we wrap them too tightly and the stick isn't able to move enough within our hand. That's something else that I would consider a wrong way to hold your sticks, where it might look correct, it might look right and look fine, but when you realize you're not getting the results you want and you're having to move your hands too much or your wrist too much, the cause of that could very well just be that the stick isn't moving enough within your hand. Because if the stick's moving within your hand, then that means that your hand doesn't have to move as much, which means your wrist doesn't have to move as much, which means there's less stress on this joint and less potential for any kind of pain or arthritis in your wrist. Because that's the goal with drumming. We want to move as little as possible. It's okay to move, you know, move with the music and groove and everything, but we don't want excessive motion. We don't want to be a slave to extra wrist motion that isn't needed. So make sure you're keeping your hands loose, sticks moving within your hands. So now let's talk about how do you know if you're holding your sticks right? How do you know if one of these things is happening? So at this point, I'm just going to do some playing here. Um, on the snare, I've got the snares turned off. We're just going to look at, okay, here's what happens if we're squeezing too tight. Here's what happens if we're loose. And just show you a little bit of what can go on with each one of these possible pitfalls. Now the pinky thing is harder to demonstrate because it is kind of a feel thing. Your other fingers can learn to compensate for the fact that maybe the pinky isn't uh, working the way it's supposed to if you're playing doubles. So you're not gonna tell a difference if I try to demonstrate this, so I'm not. But keep that in mind that if you're trying to play strong doubles, like Most of that energy probably will come from your ring finger. I've noticed that's the case with mine. But you definitely wanna keep the pinky in there too, kind of like if you're practicing this. That's just my pinky propelling that, and there's a lot of power there. So it's definitely a very useful finger. Make sure you're using it. But these big ones where you can tell an obvious problem. If I'm squeezing too tight right here, here's what this looks like. So no matter if I have these fingers loosely out here, if I'm squeezing here, it's no good. But as soon as I open up this space between my thumb and my first finger, It's like magic. Make sure that you don't have your thumb pressed up against that, that knuckle there. We don't want this, we do want that. And as for that hand looseness, well, okay, we could have you know, the right amount of space here, loose fulcrum, 
But if the fingers are too tight, it ends up looking like this. Where I'm manually having to create the rebound. I mean, the stick is kind of bouncing, but I'm controlling it too much and my hand's having to move too much. So here it is, squeezing too tight, and then I'm gonna loosen up. And you can see there how my hand didn't have to move as much once I was looser, plus the stick was moving more naturally, which resulted in a better, more consistent sound. So now that you've really seen this illustrated pretty well, as far as diagnosing any of these potential problems yourself, one of the big things to look out for is, are your sticks rebounding? So when you hit the drum, maybe I should put my leg where it's supposed to be. Is the stick bouncing or is it going? And are you having to manually create that rebound? Because if you're holding the stick correctly, the stick's gonna do what it wants to do. And so it's honestly that simple. If the sticks are able to move loosely, and you're able to play consistently, smoothly, without pain, and you're able to play whatever you want to play, there's probably not an issue. But if you find that, okay, I'm only able to play so fast, or my sticks aren't loosely bouncing, or I'm struggling with doubles, that's where you might want to evaluate this and just check those two points of fulcrum and fingers and see if there's something there that you could improve. So I said at the beginning I was going to wrap up with what I think is the single most overlooked um, technique pitfall. And that's one of the things we've been talking about. I think it's the finger squeeze thing, where as young students, we're taught to wrap our fingers around the sticks and make sure things aren't sticking out and make sure you've got control over the sticks. Because if there's no control, if you're holding like this, playing doubles this way, then you're probably gonna lose control of your sticks. Who knows what's gonna happen? So you're told to wrap your fingers around and that's fine, that's great. But a lot of times we just squeeze too tight. And the reason I think this is very overlooked and is very dangerous towards you know, achieving the good technique is because it looks right, it looks fine. If you've got your fingers wrapped around, everything looks normal and looks natural if you were to see a picture of yourself playing. But when the sticks aren't rebounding the way they're supposed to, well, there's an issue. And we know that if we can loosen things up more, it'll be better. You know, watching from this camera up here as I'm playing, it almost looks kind of exaggerated. It looked kind of crazy how open my hand is getting. But this is one of those things that just works and it makes sense and it's more natural. And so whether or not you're developing your technique into something that looks like this or maybe something a little bit differently. Just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're getting that looseness because that's the key. We've got to have the open hand looseness. I hope this video helped you out and provided you with something valuable to incorporate into your practicing today. If so, be sure to share the video and subscribe if you have yet to become a fellow non-glamorous subscriber. And before you go, check out the 60 essential drumming tips PDF that is totally free. The link is below in the description. There's just a whole bunch of really good essential drumming tips uh, from I think six different categories. Uh, just boiling down some of the basics and absolute things that you need to know as a drummer. If you're a beginner, this is really great stuff. Even if you're intermediate or advanced, you might be able to pick up some additional cool tips from this. I love learning and so I love things like this. And so this is just me wanting to present to you a lot of the knowledge I've gathered over the years. So go check that out. It is absolutely free. Thanks guys. I will see you on the next video.